Today we are going to discuss another exciting topic in the area of microservices. So in our previous episode we discussed about how to create a single microservice unit with the docker and then we uh, put them up in our local computer and live in a browser and move the tag to the docker hub for the further reference and pulling them back in the different places to run. So today we are going to discuss about the multi-container application context. Soft applications work with the multiple containers because the applications are distributed they have multiple domains and these domains have multiple containers and these containers interact with each other communicate with each other and work as a single unit as a single microservices architect today we're going to discuss about multi-container application context and domain driven design and how domain driven design inherit the microservices and how do we identify correct domains in our application context before we define and design a microservices architecture. That is the most important thing. And then the role of the Docker Compose. Let's head back to the, the real world scenario. These services actually the application domains. Okay. The payment service contains online transaction processing and the Merkin service accepting the uh, workflow, Merkin workflow and the uh, related finance parameters. And then we have a accounting service which interact with both of these payment service and the merchant service. Okay, so you can clearly identify the domains in the application, and these applications have their own databases. You can see each of these application uh, domains have their own databases, and then this can be a one single container, and this can be another container, and this can be another container. So that's how this application architecture works as a whole. Right, so let's move back to the next slide. And now we're going to discuss about how the Docker Compose, what is the role of the Docker Compose when it comes to the multi container application? Why we need the Docker Compose file? The Docker Compose is the entry point, the technology which actually maintains these applications' relationships. And it helps being a single entry point for the application, it helps to microservices to communicate to each other and work as a single unit okay so in the docker compose file we define all the microservices that we have in our application architecture and also we define dependencies between these microservices and then we make a single entry point for the application through a docker compose file so in this example you can see the front end is a one microservice and the api is another microservice and the docker compose actually connecting these microservices with each other and then we uh, define dependencies using a file and environment variables uh, used by uh, containers and container services and then the Docker Compose file finally acts as a single start entry point for the application. Let's go back to the demonstration and understand in the real world while you are doing a development how the Docker Compose actually is useful. Okay, this is my application which has API layer and the UI layer. And in the root of my application, I have a Docker Compose file, Docker Compose.yml file. Okay. Let's open up this file. And you can see it has it has one section for database. That database is uh, running on one single container that is pulling from a, a hub, and then it has the API layer that is another container, and then finally it has a UI layer. There are a few important points that I want to figure out here. So each of these services have their names this is the uh, database service and their environment variables you can see we can define like this each of uh, some of these services containers have their own environment variables so this one api has the database connection string and this environment variable is to connect to the database which is running this container okay okay so the other important point is dependencies. When the multi-containers works together in one single application context, these services have dependencies. Service 1 might have a dependency to the service 2. So in that application context, we need service 1 to run before the service 2. 
otherwise that dependency can't, can't complete at the runtime so in these situations we can actually put define these dependencies like this you can see in this particular context i am writing the api service api container depends on the database container okay and what it actually means is to run the api container prior to putting this one contains up and running we need to have this container up and running in our docker context okay so let's go to the command prompt i'm in a command prompt right now let's type a command to compose dash compose and space and up so this will bring back our docker compose file to live an application will start running on the port defined in the compose file means this port okay so it takes it might take some time you can see the files are low cool the other seems fine let's go to the local host 793 is port and boom you can see the application just right away loaded from a local computer so you can see how easy that is like uh, once you have organized environment creating these things once you have set up these things at the first place after that will be very easy so that's the end of today's video and in today's video we learned about the the role of the docker compost file and how the multi-content applications works in the microservices architecture and in our next video we're going to start learning a new concepts like what's the role of the uh, message broker and how the microservices they communicate to each other okay in the monolith architecture the services are coupled if you you can call another service from another service directly inside a call but Microservices architecture is it follows the separation of concern principle by design. So in the context like this, how do you communicate? How you pass the data? How you say this service is completed? And how the other service get to know the one service is completed? So these things we are going to discuss in our next tutorial. So I highly recommend you keep in touch with this video series and follow the, the series from the beginning and always follow the video till the end. That's the end of today's video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Thanks. Cheers.